Hello everyone, Nubkex here and welcome to the Road to Grandmaster. We're here on Battlefield of Eternity. And we're actually playing this game with a couple of other guys uh, that I know, so no reflex looking for team. Played a few games with him before. I believe these guys are German. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just randomly queued up for a game and got them into the game. Then one of the guys, they were playing as a, a triple queue. One of them actually DC'd from the draft, so I kind of took his place for a game here. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. But yeah, we're on Battlefield for Eternity in terms of the bands. Zeratul, Anubarak, Anna. There's really no big surprises here at all. Um, I think he's just kind of checking out my teammates and seeing what they may be interested in playing here. You can see Naki over here is, uh, he's got a lot of games played on Chromie with a six, uh, plus 60% win rate. Uh, and I think that's just filtered for uh, ranked games as well. So very impressive record on the hero. And that's what he is looking for playing. Uh, we have Gandalf the Grey or Gandhi, Gandhi the Grey. Uh, if you guys like Quill 18, you know that Gandhi, he is uh, famous for using nuclear weapons. Um, <laughs> we're going to grab Greymane here as uh, one of our first picks. Uh, I'm just hovering an Uberak to show that um, I, I'm intending to play tank here for the guys. Uh, I'm going to grab the Chromie here as well. The enemy team has Tyrande, so he did go for the two. Uh, two damage in the first rotation, which might not necessarily be the best choice, but um, there you go. I, I wasn't quite certain what tank I'd play at this point. Just decided I did want to play tank. The enemy team is going to grab Diablo uh, and Lunara. So I don't necessarily feel that Lunara goes all that well with Diablo, but certainly Diablo and Tyrande are quite good together. We're going to ban away Alarak. Oh, by the way, the other ban was Maiev, which again, I think is a good ban. Um, and certainly I think Chromie and Greymane are very good on this map. Particularly Chromie since her rework. I think she's actually a lot better on the map than she used to be. Uh, and I think she's a very good option. So I'm looking at ETC here. The enemy team banned away Arthas. Um, so that's a thing. I don't really know why. I mean, they could have taken Arthas and uh, another like high damage character at the back and had a very good team. So I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, <laughs> Lunara, for example, gets some bonus damage against slow targets and whatnot. I think the Arthas have been very strong, you know, survivable against the Chromie, absorbs their skill shots, and obviously very good against Greyman. I think would have been a good choice for them, but they do go for Thrall and the Varian, so very unusual comp from them. And our solo laner, he's kind of trying to figure out now what he is going to play. So the enemy team, they do have um, Thrall and Varian and Diablo, so a very, very tanky front line there, very unusual. We're going to lock in Tyrael, which again, I think is an unusual and interesting pick. Uh, something of an attempt to counteract uh, the enemy team, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll see how that works out in the game. I think a bit of a weird draft on both sides. Um, <laughs> definitely breaking the mold. Like I said, I, I feel like obviously they banned away the Arthas because those guys, they wanted to play Thrall and they wanted to play Varian. And I think obviously Arthas into that would be pretty crippling for them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think they would have been better off, you know, and a better draft for them would have been to pick the Arthas themselves. Obviously, Lunara brings that uh, siege damage at level 4 uh, with her poison, which is pretty good on the map. But there you go. Let's knock it down to the slower speed and let's dive into it. Alrighty, and we're back to normal speed. We're slow slowing it down. Slowing things down. And we're playing some ETC here on Battlefield of Eternity. Uh, I think ETC, he's a really interesting tank. I also think he's a very good tank. Uh, I think one thing that people that don't play ETC too much will f will say or will find is they'll say that ETC is very squishy. And in some respects, he certainly is. You obviously get armor uh, through your trait. So whenever you use an, a basic ability, I, I don't know if the heroics count actually. But whenever you use an ability, you get some armor, a small bit of armor for a couple of seconds. Uh, and obviously his E guitar solo does heal him for a relatively reasonable amount. But in terms of burst damage and whatnot, he is somewhat vulnerable. So really with ETC, you're playing around his basic abilities, his cooldowns. Very important to play around his cooldowns and how they work. Because um, they really define the hero and he's kind of unlike really most other tanks in the game, I suppose. Uh, you see, I'm going to be a little bit ballsy here. <laughs> going to take a good bit of damage, but with our self-healing and whatnot, you can see that actually turns into a positive trade. Why am I playing so aggressive here before I talk about his abilities? Why am I going so crazy here in the lane? And um, The reason is, like, looking at our comp, I think our comp is better than theirs. Varian is pretty terrible uh, before level 4. Uh, Diablo at level 1 without any souls is kind of terrible as well. So uh, I kind of felt 
uh, and power to be a little bit aggressive there. And we kind of got away with it, even though it was able to ta you know, tank in the towers and whatnot. And again, you can see here, just like we're doing this crazy aggressive positioning, really pushing things in. Um, in this situation, I don't think it's smart to power slide in because we would potentially get uh, overpowered by Diablo over the wall, right? So just having to consider that positioning stuff. So not going to go as aggressive that time, even though it probably did look uh, on first glance to be a better situation for us. I'm just pinging the siege camp here as well. Oh, these towers, destroying the towers were actually a better case here. But yeah, just pinging the siege camp saying, right, we have such a dominant lane. Let's focus on getting this siege camp early on uh, to kind of punish the enemy team for having this weak four-man lane into us at the start of the game. Grey main, Chromie, they'll tear through that camp, no problem. That's a really nice Chromie trap. Able to get the power slide, then knock him back. He does Q me, which is smart. The Diablo shadow charge to try to get himself out of harm's way. Uh, but we're still nonetheless able to get a good trade. I'm obviously going to focus on grabbing this globe with Krog Rock as well, level one. We got that quest. Um, increasing the healing of our E, and then eventually have 20 globes. We'll start healing nearby allies too, so just a bit of extra help. They've destroyed the fountain, and then hopefully we should switch to this camp and get it uh, while the enemy team is still kind of weak and out of position before they're able to come in and punish us with our low mana bars on the healer and on the chromie. Um, let's talk about ETC though. So his Q ability power slide. I think this is one of the most defining things in combination as well with his W uh, face melt. So power slide doesn't give you unstoppable or anything but is a movement ability which is also a stun and then his w face melt is an aoe knockback so obviously you've got the standard etc combo of you know q through somebody stunning them and then use the face melt your w to knock them back that's the most typical way to use it but yeah this is where etc gets really complicated because essentially your engage and your escape um are the same thing. They're your power slide. It's also your your stun, right? So that's uh, that really makes this hero a little bit crazy, because um, you have to choose your moment very carefully. If you power slide in randomly um, and leave yourself in the middle of the enemy team, you can be blown up and killed very quickly and have a really really bad time. So yeah, obviously would not recommend that. Um, so it's kind of choose choosing your moments properly and understanding how how. Just how the game works and how heroes work, what abilities they have available, uh, you know, what their cooldowns are, how their damage works. This is kind of a nice game for it because the enemy team has really low burst damage overall. I mean, the Varian obviously does a lot, but apart from Varian, it's not too bad. Um, I think the other big thing you want to work with with ETC, and we do grab, uh, I, I think it's called Loudspeakers at level 4, which increases the range and knockback of our W ability by 50%. That's going to be crucial. So that gives us another kind of aspect or element of tankiness as well, because we can knock enemies away with our W. Quite a substantial uh, margin away as well. That essentially allows us to be a little bit tanky, because we can go in, the power side, we can knock them away. And if they're knocked away, there's a lot of heroes that when knocked away, they can't do damage to us. So that kind of buys us a little bit of time. And even if we're not necessarily like, you know, let's say like Garrosh with his trait, like just up this absolutely beefcake uh, type hero, we can still, in a way, let's say, absorb or tank a lot of damage, not by actually taking the damage, but by disrupting the enemy's position so much that they can't uh, they can't really do anything otherwise. So you can see here, for example, breaking the combo. We're going to use our W to knock them backwards, and then wait, and then power slide through them, and then we're able to position behind the enemy team, just body block them a little bit, and make, so, you know, we actually end up winning the fight just about, and winning the first Immortal, and really close, a really, really close fight. I'm going to stay here to get the two globes for my quest at level 1, then going to peace out. I was thinking of picking a different uh, talent at level 7, but um, in the end, I'm not going to go for it. I think I do take the Pinball Wizard, which is your standard one. Makes your face melt do 300% bonus damage to targets that have been hit by Power Slide. I think you've got about a 2 second window, something like that. It's a, I mean, essentially, you want to hit them like as soon as the stun wears off. That's another ETC tip, is like, stun them with Power Slide. Wait for the duration. So look against the Thrall. Bam. You see that? Right there against the Thrall. We're waiting for the stun. Just get the full value out of the stun. Then go for the knockback. They get stuck in the knockback animation a little bit. And that's just sort of the maximum CC duration. So you can do sort of stuff like that. Uh, but yeah. Like, like I said, I feel ETC compared to, let's say, let's say Johanna or Murad. Well, Muradin is a little more complicated. But let's say Johanna is like the classic example. She's like one of my favorite tank. 
And she's kind of like the prototypical tank, I feel, in a lot of ways. But she's like the real anchor point of her team. Just kind of frontlining. Uh, in comparison, ETC, he's much more complicated. He's a much more advanced tank. Where your positioning is really important. Uh, flanking, the threat of flanking is really important. And, and it's just all about cooldowns and the threat of cooldowns. Mosh Pit is a great example. The enemy team just always has to respect the Mosh Pit cooldown. Always be aware, okay, ETC is nearby. He has Mosh Pit. Do we have anything for it? Yes or no. You have to position around it. Does he have power slide available so he can power slide into a mosh pit, etc, etc. Here Varian is showing on the top of the map, so this is a really good fight for us. We're just going to go in aggressively here, and again, we're just going to get some value out of this. Um, I guess Tyrael didn't have any cooldowns, so it would have been better for him to stay aggressive there and let me take the point, but that's only a small thing. Uh, obviously, without my cooldowns, I'm not all that useful. Temporal loop pulls the Diablo back, and that is an easy kill for us. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't lose any of his souls, but nonetheless, that's a nice little kill. It's going to enable us to take this fort, which will push us towards level 10 and obviously open up the map and just be really fantastic, all things considered. And that puts us in a great spot moving in to this objective. There's going to be relatively little that the enemy team can do. Now, this is really nice. This is a good call as well to push the bruiser camp, so that's fantastic. The team moving as five to burst this bruiser camp down and make sure that it's going to be dead. Uh, coming into this objective just for that extra split push pressure and map control and whatnot. Uh, just in advance because I probably won't get to cover them. I imagine there's going to be a bunch of shit going on. I'm going to take Mosh Pit here. Well, I've obviously played Stage Dive before as well. This isn't really a great map for Stage Dive. And I feel the threat of Mosh Pit uh, here is going to be worthwhile. Um, though they have a lot of interrupts against it, right? <laughs> like the Thrall can interrupt it with Sundering, Diablo. Um, obviously, Apocalypse can interrupt it. Um, not the best done there. Not the best one. Uh, I was trying to knock the Varian away, but he's not positioned in quite the right spot. And here we're chasing. I'm obviously, you know, don't have power slide available, so can't catch them out. Gonna go in at the Tronda. Again, knock her back. Just trying to get her out of position. And here's another classic ETC thing, which is trying to body block. Just trying to stop her moving through. This actually isn't perfect, though. I should be landing more basic attacks. You can see the Tronda, her heal comes up just in time, and she just survives. So I was kind of kicking myself there. I was focusing on the body blocking, trying to get the perfect body block on her, because I messed it up at the start. And then I stopped weaving in basic attacks, which you can do, though it will slow you down ever so slightly. Um, but I kind of regretted it. I thought that she would die, and she didn't. So mistakes were made. Nonetheless, we're pretty far ahead. Um, however, White Mane is way out of position. She gets collapsed upon and killed. Um, the reason why is the enemy team basically... I'm going for a mosh pit there, but they get a good stun on me, the Diablo. Uh, and uh, yeah, then we're obviously standing in the immortal circle, so we're definitely dead, but it does secure the immortal for us So maybe a little bit crazy. I don't know if it was worth it That's kind of a tough situation there where white main fucked up She's just way out of position the enemy team just got level 10 So they're coming in to fight with all their heroics. So even though we've been winning this game the whole time Even though we've been winning the whole time that was actually a favorable fight for the enemy team because they're fighting under their immortal I think every single one of them had their heroic available uh, and I don't think we did so yeah that's something to always watch out for. Like, that's the, the power point where the enemy team has a chance to swing the momentum of the game. And they did a good job. Lucky, I guess, that we won the Immortal in the end. But yeah, pretty interesting sort of turn of events uh, on that particular point. Just going to run over here. Looking for the flank. I'm kind of expecting here. You can see while I'm going through the middle of the map. I'm expecting the Varian to rotate down. It's a Colossus Smash Varian. Like, I, I, I haven't quite tracked what heroics they still have available uh, at this point. But... You would think that they could force a fight like Divas behind the Immortal. They have a really good team for doing that. I'm just fishing for a, a kill here, fishing for a pick. Uh, you can see we can tank up a lot of damage, and we don't really mind. So yeah, there's a few pot. There's a bit of posturing here and there, but uh, nothing's actually going to come of it. Gandhi the Grey gone with a damage heroic on White Mane. That's really unusual too. But I guess that they don't. Again, they don't have enough burst damage to make it really worthwhile. So, yeah, Tyrael wants to kill the Varian. I don't think it's that important. We've got a Temporal Loop on the Thrall. So we're going to stun him out of that. The Knockback actually gets the kill on him. But it's a good uh, displacement by the Diablo onto the Greymane, getting good damage out. You can see I'm taking a ton of damage. The 25 armor doing us proud, though. A little bit of healing. And those 18 regen globes from that level 1 quest. Uh, just boosting up that healing slightly uh, is enough to just about keep us alive there. So, yeah. Pretty scary situation, but we survived. Tyrael is just soaking away. That's all right. Um, I think rushing this bottom camp is pretty good. In that situation, I mean, yeah, the Varian is pushing top, but we're pushing a keep, and the keep is better. I think it's totally fine to stay down 
bottom and look for an advantage over there. Even more so because it is our Merc camp line, so it gives it some extra value. Varian actually didn't even kill the didn't kill the healing well, so we're all good. Just gonna grab the globe over the wall. And yeah, they're looking looking for some position towards top lane. At this point, the enemy team's so far ahead, I don't think there's even any bother. I think the Grey Main is doing an, a, an interesting thing here, which is you know, push out the wave. Uh, I don't think tanking Lunara Q is a good idea though, and her spell shield saves her from go for the throat. So yeah, it's not the best. We have to go save him. I, I think, you know, just giving up the top lane and again, taking that camp to have a, a powerful map position during this objective could have been a good option, but this is fine too. We can just go take the camp at this particular point. Grey Mane's healing up. Uh, you know, the new Chromie's got pretty good damage against the camp, so it's all good. And there you go. Both teams level 13. I'm basically neck and neck and experience. They're probably doing their, their bruiser camp as well. The map's relatively even, so... Yeah, in fact, there they are. That's a really nice time trap by the Chromie again. Catches them out. Looking for... You'll notice me spending a little bit of time looking at that Lunara Wisp during the game. Just trying to kill it off. Gives them good vision. Varian is kind of AFK here, so we're able to catch him just on the end of a power slide. Knock him back. He's going to turn around and dive the Chromie, which is certainly brave. Uh, but gives me a really nice position for a mosh pit. Hilariously, Diablo's actually just unstoppable fire breathing through that. But the Sang for Texas. That was a nice... Mosh bit by a uh, uh, nice uh, Diablo heroic. He actually gets away with it, but we're able to catch, uh, I think, the Varian in the edge of it. Lunara looking for the kill. You can see just the tankiness, though, of ETC in this situation. We're able to survive through it. And yeah, I'm just positioning aggressively. Ready to punish if they do something dumb and try to stop us from actually taking this objective. People are known to do such things. They're known to do such things. Uh, on the immortal swapping position. So this is a really, really good position for us then. Winning that fight is huge. Um, yeah, you can see I have to be pretty uh, patient with my positioning uh, in terms of when I use uh, when I use the mosh pit because they do have a good few interrupts. I think that not, mm, taking the fire breath instead of APOC, in my opinion, is a really big mistake. I think it's a good map for APOC, and I think APOC works really well against our team as well. Um, like it's got a good chance to mess up me, good chance to mess up the Chromie, the white main. Like Chromie and white main both have cast time abilities. So, I think that's just smart. But, well, that's what he went for. His funeral, I suppose. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is almost a full health immortal. Just position to the side. And awesome. The power of healing, self-healing against the Lunara sustained damage is pretty good. I think I take Showstopper here. It's the kind of standard pick. A couple of globes kind of escape our grasps, unfortunately. Good route by Thrall to protect himself. I'm being maybe a little bit too passive here. I should be more aggressive hunting down the enemy team. Again, we're able to catch the Varian, though. He's obviously going to turn it around. I don't have... Uh, that's a really, really nice uh, uh, time loop as well. Pull the Varian back in. Protected, by the way, though. I do not have um, time... Oh, I also took the mic check, which reduces the cooldown of our W if we hit two heroes. They've got so many melee heroes that it's relatively reasonable to get that proc fairly often. The power slide's actually a little overkill, but no matter. No matter. And the Immortal's on the court. This is why we're forcing this so aggressively as well. If they're fighting us, they're not killing the Immortal. And this is a very powerful Immortal indeed. Oh, it's a good overpower, unfortunately. <laughs> Cheeky mosh bit. Would have been amazing if we got that mosh bit off. Uh, but nonetheless, Varian, he's focused down by the Chromie. He goes down, and the core is gonna go down as well so yeah kind of a really fast crash course in the etc i think with etc what i would say is it's worth watching like a bunch of games of like good etc play and just like consider why always be asking like why do they go in when they do um be looking at their cooldowns be thinking about the enemy team's cooldowns and playing around that he's definitely not you know like an artist where you just kind of face tank into the enemy team and you're like haha i survive everything uh, it's not that kind of hero. It's all about choosing your moments uh, smartly and, and playing around or intelligently and playing around it. But there you guys go. That was some ETC gameplay here with a couple of our a couple of our friends. And I hope you enjoyed. Give a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you all next time for more Road to Grandmaster. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.